Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to Hack My Growth. In this episode, we're going to be taking a deeper look into Google Analytics and nine underused features that can really help you get more out of your site's data and help you make smarter decisions. All right, let's go. So Google Analytics, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated analytics softwares on the market. Uh, a lot of times we go and we we want to find you know the hot tool or something that's expensive out there that you know that everybody else is using because we think that's going to give us the answers. But the reality is is we can actually gain a lot of insight using this free tool brought to you by the people over at Alphabet Inc. Now Google Analytics is a powerful tool, and if you have it set up right and you have some of the the, the the, the connections in maybe, you know, make sure you have the connection to search console using Google tag manager and some of the other things available. You can really uncover some powerful insights, but even if you don't have everything hooked up, there's a number of reports and features that you can use right now to be uncovering um, powerful data around your customers. This is the Google analytics homepage. There's a number of great reports in here. You know, if you just take some time to go over them, uh, one of my favorites is this time of day report it lets you to see when users are most active on your site. Very powerful report and very helpful when you're trying to plan out your content strategy, engagement strategy. But these aren't the things we're going to look at. We're not going to focus on the dashboard today. We're going to look at some underused features underneath the hood. And the first one we're going to take a look at is the content drill down report. And you're going to find that in behavior, in site content, content drill down. Now, what's cool about this report is that it's organized by your site's URL structure. It's going to group together the sections of your site. Uh, based on your page path levels, and it's going to roll up dimensions underneath those. So page views, unique page views, time on site, all under how your site's kind of structured. This is really cool because it's going to allow you to see what categories, um, what, what kind of dimensions around your site's content, what types of content are performing better than, than other parts of your website. You know, as we can see in this demo account that uh, the store page is doing much better than store policy pages, which you wouldn't make sense. People probably aren't that excited about reading store policy pages. But what you can do is you can begin to see what groups of content are performing, how they're performing together when people are on your site and make better decisions off of that. This is really helpful if you're an e-commerce company because you're able to see what, what products are most popular, what um, categories are most popular, but even in content marketing side, maybe you're not an e-commerce company, but you can see what types of content is performing best on your site. This is a great report. It's easy to find behavior, site content, and then content drill down. The next report we're going to look at, you have to have something set up with search console, but once you do, you're going to see a lot of cool data. So we're going to click acquisition, and then we're going to go search console. And there's four different reports in here. So Google Search Console is a separate tool brought to you by Google. And what it does is it allows you to see how your site's performing in search. It allows you to see you know, some backlinking data, some keyword data, uh, some ranking data, as well as allows you to get uh, updates on the health of your website and you can submit sitemaps. What they do now by tying them together is you can actually see your Search Console data inside of Google Analytics and some click data uh, associated with that. So this is really cool. You can see it on both an acquisition standpoint and a behavioral standpoint. And Search Console is gonna give us the insights like click-through rate, uh, average position, so where your site averagely, you know, on an average ranks in Google, um, how many sessions were driven from these different pages. Uh, something that's very helpful to a lot of companies are the queries. So Google used to give you some keyword data. They've obviously masked a lot of that data, but you can find that data using Search Console. Now, as we see, number one is other. So this is all the data that's going to be masked. But underneath that, we have a number of keywords that we can look at. And as you can see, we go to row 10. Well, there's actually 8,000 keywords that we can go through. So I can put this up to 5,000, right? And begin to see what types of terms are driving people to my website. So how many clicks were in the search engine results, which is what impressions is, right? Um, and then what's my click-through rate? And then what's my average position for that term? So this is going to help me see how my site is performing. If you, you scroll over these little helpful boxes, they'll say, you know, the average ranking of your URL for the queries. Uh, for example, if your site appears in page seven of one query and three for another, your average position would be five. Um, Pretty easy to break down and understand how it works. But this is a lot of that keyword data that you may thought wasn't available to you, but it is available to you in Search Console, and then you can connect it and do a lot more um, 
deeper dives within Google Analytics by syncing up your Search Console with Google Analytics. If you don't have it synced up, when you go to the Search Console page, it will tell you that you don't, but it'll also give you a little button to tell you, hey, time to sync it up. Here's how you do it. So highly recommend that you do that. The third feature we're going to look at is annotations. Now, annotations are very helpful to help you keep track of what's impacting what on your website. So let's say you did a big push in, uh, for blogging uh, and you wanna see how your blog has impacted your site traffic. Well, instead of in the back of your mind saying, okay, I need to remember when I started blocking, I can actually click this little, um, this little arrow right here and it says create annotation. And I could say, you know, started content marketing strategy. and save. Now you can make it private or you can save it for the whole group. Now you'll see this little bubble over here and that little bubble is gonna stay there and now every time you wanna see uh, how this was impacted, you can go back and say, okay, yeah, we started our content marketing on that day and this is how it's performed over time. Uh, it's a really great way to, to, to really give you insights into what happened and how that may have impacted your website traffic. Um, you know, Maybe you had a sale and you wanna know was that spike in traffic just because we were really popular all of a sudden, or was that spike in traffic from the sale? And if you would have had that annotation in there, you would have known really what caused that, that spike in traffic. The fourth feature we're going to look at are pivot tables. Now pivot tables are a great way to reorganize your data, get a deeper dive of your data and really understand um, how that's impacting, but also getting another look at it. So you're, you know, you're not just seeing it from one angle. Now, if you look over here, there's a number of different charts and graphs. So we can obviously do a percentage and have this graphic chart, but most people just look at the table, right? Well, let's say we want to get more out of that table. We can create a pivot table by clicking this icon over here. And what we've done now is turned our normal source data into a pivot table. So we're pivoting by source metric, but you can also change this by a number uh, of different um, options. And then we can pivot the metrics on user or bounce rate or acquisition or any of those. But let's say we wanted to pivot this on um, average session duration. And now we're, we're able to see a little bit different of a breakdown with, with our data and able to reorganize our data in different ways so we can get different angles on it and get deeper dives on how our users are interacting, how different source channels are performing for us, how, um, how is this impacting our overall goal rate, conversion rates? We can put that up here if we wanna do e-commerce conversion rates. This is gonna break down the data a lot more for us and help us see it um, in a little bit of a different way to get a little bit more value out of it. If you like pivot tables, you can use pivot tables in Google Analytics and you can break down your data in a much deeper level. The fifth feature that a lot of people don't know about is site speed and user timing. So site speed is important. We need to have fast sites. We know that Google is looking at our site speed and is going to take that into account when we're talking about performance, when we're talking about ranking. It wants our site to load in under two seconds, if that's possible, because people uh, do not have a short attention span. So if we go to behavior, site speed, and just start an overview, we can see how the average load page of our site is. We can see how it's performing in different browsers. Uh, this site performs best in Google Chrome, and it performs worse in uh, Android WebView, uh, but it can kind of show us, hey, here's how our site's performing in a number of different internet channels, uh, internet platforms. We can also look at page timings. Uh, which is going to tell us how each page is, is performing and show us some where the errors might be. Where are we uh, we falling off the map, maybe against you know the, the, the site average. It also can give us speed suggestions. So a lot of times we would use Google PageSpeed to do this. Well, this tool is now available to you right inside Google Analytics, where they can begin to tell you, hey, here's what's going on. Here's your PageSpeed suggestions. I can drop this out. What do you know? It opened up PageSpeed Insight for us. And now we're not really having to leave Google Analytics, but we can still keep track of what's going on. Here you're gonna have a number of the different things that you can do. Most of the common ones I see are leverage browsing caching, 
um, eliminate render blocking. This is very common. I see this in almost every single site we run. Optimizing images, you know, some of the things that you can do to speed up this website. Really great, really great alert. Uh, really uh, helpful for your web designer, for your web developer, and to make sure that you're having the best user experience possible. Another cool thing that you can do in Google Analytics is actually set up automated emails and automated alerts. In your admin panel, you have personal tool sets and assets. So you can create a number of cool things here. You can track your annotations. You can change some attribution models. Don't do any of these things, uh, custom channel groupings and stuff, unless you kind of know what you're doing and don't really do them on your master view. If you want to mess around with those, I, I recommend you, you kind of creating a separate view to do that. Um, and because you can mess up your data and stuff can get all wacky and then, you know, you pretty much have to start over, but you can set up custom alerts. So maybe you want to check to see, you know, if our site traffic drops to zero, maybe like our tag isn't working anymore or something changed and we removed our tag, you can say, you know, um, check tag and it's in the master view. Send me an email when this triggers, um, all traffic is less than one. And if I set this alert, every time that and I can add my email address here, anytime that our traffic went less than one visit uh, for a day, it would send me an alert, say, hey, something happened with your Google Analytics. You should probably go check it out. The customer alert was triggered. Really helpful. You can actually schedule emails. So we're not going to save this. Thank you. Uh, right now, we, we don't have any uh, reports, but let's say you've, you, you've created a custom report uh, in Google Analytics and you want to email this report maybe to yourself or to your client, you can use this report um, in the share option. So you can share the template um, or you can set up a an email to send out to you. Um, if you just click the, the share icon in the top left, list the email addresses that you want to receive the report and they will now get that report with you. So set this up here. You can share a link or like I said before, um, share in solutions gallery. I don't want to do that. But this is really great because if your client has a report that they want access to uh, here, they, they want to see these e-commerce stats, right? You can go ahead and say, this is going to go to Betty at client.com and you can even set a frequency. So one-time report, daily report, weekly report, monthly report, or quarterly report. This is a really great reporting solution. If you need to send reports, it's going to do it for you. It's going to customize the report. You can build these reports any way that you want. Um, there's different dashboards that you can send out, uh, SEO performance dashboards, whatever. And, uh, you can create your own, or you can also download some from the, um, the Google uh, Marketplace, which has a number of different reports. So let's say you need to send out reports to your clients. Well, you can do it right within Google Analytics. Send out reports. You can send them to your team, your content managers, whoever needs to see this data and you don't have to buy expensive BI software. The next thing we're gonna look at is the model comparison tool. So we're able to use multi-channel funnel reports to actually see how channel groupings are translating to conversions. So this allows us to see what channels, what types of content is leading up to conversions. This is very helpful to understand the buyer's journey on our website. So we're going to go into conversions, multi-channel funnels. Now, if we go to the overview report, we're able to see how many conversions, how many clicks assisted in conversions, the impressions of, of assisted conversions, rich media asset conversions, and it really allows us to see what um, traffic source is leading to the most conversions, what is uh, helping assist people along the journey? Um, what's the value of that? Which allows us to understand what steps are they taking? So assisting interaction, first interaction that they take. So the first interaction referral is very high. Um, assisting interaction, uh, direct traffic. So people are coming back probably. Um, and then what's converting? Again, is that direct traffic. So the first interaction, we're having some referrals. Um, the assisting interaction is telling us that, that direct traffic is doing that. The conversions are also happening through direct traffic. So we know that a referral is really driving a lot of those first time interactions. And, and, and then the direct traffic, possibly returning people coming back uh, for that, uh, whatever they're purchasing from this e-commerce store. 
is really what's helping us uh, drive the results that we want to see. Again, this is helping you know what channel is delivering the best ROI, what channel is getting people in the door, but also which channel is, is helping people convert, which channel is helping people assist along the way. A lot of times we say, okay, well, everybody's converting for direct traffic, so it means none of our other sources are working well. But if we really looked at this report, we would know that people are coming most of the time for the first time through our referral traffic. So our referral sources are actually the ones that are introducing people to us. Maybe they're not the one that people click last for conversions, but they're what people click the most first. And that would normally get ignored if we were only looking at how they converted and not how they found us in the first place. So this multi-channel funnel report is very helpful for us to see that and how that works. And this is available to anybody who has Google Analytics. This is not a 360 tool. This is completely all Google Analytics free. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was something that Google put out a while back that a lot of people aren't even aware is there. Up here at the top right, you see this little button that says intelligence. It has a little one next to it. This means Google has a little alert for us. And it's going to tell us, you know, a couple of different things. You know, every once in a while, it sees, say, week, website, week performance, uh, website performance week over week. But you can actually ask it questions. Now, this is what a lot of BI tools are doing. Um, and a lot of people buy and purchase BI tools for this very reason. But Google Analytics has a built in. Um, and I can actually say, you know, what traffic source is driving conversions? <laughs> they didn't understand that question. What drives So if I re-ask it, you're not always going to get it right the first time. You got to try. But here, the top 10 source medium by goal completions. I asked what drives conversions. Organic search is driving conversions. Mail is driving conversions. Um, gdeals.googleplex.com is a referral source. So these two referral sources we're seeing are driving, um, driving goal completions since December 30th. So this is based on 100% of recessions. Yes, this was very helpful. Thank you for telling me that. Um, but you can ask Google a lot of questions. You know, they'll give you a couple questions in here. Percentage of female users by country. I mean, this is really helpful if you're, again, your e-commerce company and you want to know who, um, are you, are you, are your female users actually buying your products or are they not? And this allows us to see in the United States, female users are 6.5%. Uh, so maybe we need to change our branding message to drive the female traffic the way we want to, or maybe we need to readjust certain things. So you can actually ask questions of your data right in here and uncover some powerful insights. You can export these reports. You can go directly to this report and you can say, hey, we put a lot of emphasis on, on driving uh, female users, but we're, we're not doing very well. Uh, and especially uh, it's they're underperforming greatly when it compares to our male users. So how can we change or adjust our message to make sure that we're targeting the female audience more specifically? So Google Analytics, as you can see, has a ton of powerful tools under the hood. Get in here, play around a little bit, take these suggestions that we've laid out in this video. There's a number of other great um, uh, insights underneath this tool. Uh, one website I highly recommend is lunametrics.com. Uh, Check out their blog. They've got a number of, of great resources and blogs available that, that tell even more about the undercarriage of Google Analytics and Google 360 Analytics 360 if you have access to that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please comment below. And until next time, happy marketing.